And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce my friend, my colleague, the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Senator from Georgia, the senior senator, Sam Nunn. Thank you very much, John Warner, my good friend. You handled the microphone this evening very well, John. I didn't have to put my hand over it a single time. <laughs> Mr. President, friends of John Stennis, it has been said that great men are like eagles. They do not flock together. You find them one at a time, soaring alone, using, using their skill and their strength to reach new heights and to seek new horizons. Such a man and such an eagle is John Stennis. He is a man gentle and courteous in conduct, but tough and strong in conviction and in character. He is a man of singular purpose and broad vision, yet sensitive and understanding of the needs of others. For the last 40 years, John Stennis has personified the highest ideals of honor and integrity within the United States Senate. Those of us who serve with him treasure his steadfast leadership, his fearless courage, his kindness towards others, his unselfish devotion to public service, a man who has much in common with our honoree. First, both men have reached their prime in government service at an age that, frankly, most of us will be sitting on our porch thinking only of what time we should feed the dog. second thing they have in common, both have built a reputation in public service of holding to their firm convictions through thick and thin, regardless of what might have been. Our tribute tonight is really led by our Commander-in-Chief. This President, like seven other Presidents from both political parties, has shown his special appreciation for the leadership and the wise counsel of John Stennis. His presence here tonight befits the way in which Ronald Reagan has brought so much to the office he now holds. He has enlivened us all with his wit, his warmth, his grace, and his sense of optimism that have been so meaningful to this nation for the last seven years. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor and great privilege to present to you the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, and, and thank you all. And I want to thank you especially for extending your gracious Southern hospitality for this fellow who happened to be raised up north in Illinois. In fact, being here with all you Southerners, would you be surprised if it reminded me of a story? <laughs> it has to do with a Yankee who was driving through the Deep South in Mississippi, and there was a car on the road with a native son driving, and there was an accident. They collided. The cars were pretty much wrecked, but both got out, and fortunately, neither one was seriously injured. And the hometowner, the uh, constituent of, of our guest of honor, uh, said, wait a minute. He said, you look a little shaken up just a second. He went back to his wrecked car and came back with a bottle of bourbon and said, here, take this. It'll settle your nerves. And he 
So he took a shot and tried to give it back, and he said, no, 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 go on, no, take another one, no, go ahead. <laughs> and about two or three drinks later, the Yankee said, hey, look, wait a minute, Southern hospitality is all right, but here, you haven't had a drop, you take one. He says, no, I'm just going to stand here and wait till the police come. Well, while we're all sorry to see Senator Stennis leave Washington, I want you to know that I have a special reason. You see, Senator, you're one of the few fellows left in this town who calls me kid. <laughs> but Senator Stennis, honored guests and ladies and gentlemen, this gathering tonight truly is a celebration. And the man we honor is no ordinary individual. The life and career of John Stennis are legendary in his home state of Mississippi and here in Washington, where he has served, as you've been told several times tonight, with quiet dignity for 41 years. 41 years, consider that if you will. Senator Stennis has served in the Senate for one-fifth of the life of this nation. Probably half of the people in this room tonight had not even been born when John Stennis came to Washington. And I suppose there are plenty in the other half who'd hardly care to admit it. Uh, over four decades of service in the United States Senate, a period during which his, this country, great, great country, has undergone tremendous challenge and change. The humble man who came to Washington from a small town in Mississippi has made an impression on American government that is difficult to match, measure and hard to fully describe. He has demonstrated for all of us that one man committed to God and country, willing to work hard and sacrifice personal gain and comfort, can make a difference. Mississippi can take pride in the accomplishments of John Stennis, but he is a United States Senator, and so we celebrate his contribution to all of America. Tangible evidence of the difference between, or the difference Senator Stennis has made, abounds. Our strong and able military, represented so splendidly here tonight, owes much of its strength to this man who has always been an unwavering advocate of peace through strength. As chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee in the 70s, Senator Stinn has led some of the most crucial legislative battles in history on behalf of our national defense. Back home in Mississippi, the economic opportunities that Senator Stennis has helped to bring about are beyond counting. Today, there's room for even more economic growth in Mississippi as there, as there is in all the 50 states. But now Mississippi fully shares in the economic life of the nation. And yet, perhaps John Stennis' greatest contribution to American government has been his abiding example of integrity in public service. From the time he was elected to represent the people of Kemper County in the Mississippi House of Representatives in 1928 until this moment, six decades later, Senator Stennis has been under the oath of public office. And for these six decades, he has done that oath constant honor. <laughs> Here in Washington, John Stennis established his reputation early in his Senate career, always recognizing that the effectiveness of the Senate is harmed when members fail to uphold the highest standards. It's no wonder the Senate looked at John Stennis as a leader when the Select Committee on Standards and Conduct was formed in 1965. And now, if I might, I'd like to add a personal note. Life has not always been easy for Senator Stennis. We all recall his remarkable recovery from gunshot wounds in 1973. His sense of purpose, his commitment to duty would not allow him to stop or even to slow down. Then there was heart surgery in 1983. And then in 1984, there was more surgery, radical surgery. I remember visiting Senator Stennis at Walter Reed Army Medical Center just days after the removal of his left leg. I admit I felt great pain for him. This fiercely independent man forced to undergo such a life-altering operation. I went to Walter Reed to encourage Senator Stennis. 
But when I left, it was I who had been strengthened. For even then, from his hospital bed, John Stennis talked of the future of this nation. Determination to return to his post was evident in everything he said. It was December 4th when I made that visit to Walter Reed, and just over a month later, I stood inside the Capitol to take the oath of office for the second term as president, and yes, there was John Stennis in the front row. Senator, when I consider your career, there's a certain comparison that comes to my mind. In troubled places, you brought calm resolve, like one of the many great fighting ships you've done so much to obtain for the Navy. Serene, self-possessed, but like a ship of the last of a high sense of purpose. That's John Stennis. And Senator, if you think I'm leading up to something, I am. Senator Stettis, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to announce tonight that as an expression of the nation's gratitude for the public service of the man we honor tonight, the Navy's next nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, CVN-74, will be christened the USS John C. Stennis. Senator, you have devoted your life to the service of our nation. I can do no more tonight than say on behalf of the American people, thank you for your dedicated service. Godspeed in your further endeavors, and God bless you. President Reagan, ladies and gentlemen, friends all, let me warmly and deeply thank you for the fine things that you've had to say. It really, at the time you said them, I was almost overcome. And I had this thought I want to share with you. Even though this applause, these words of compliment are truthfully said by the talk of the person, meant every word they said to the deepest feelings. And I appreciate it with all of my capacity. But I believe the biggest thing about it is that they are partly expressing at the same time their interest in and respect for the free government that we have. And I'm... <laughs> And I, I mean every word of that because I, one reason I've had cause for several years to remember almost every day that we had to reconnoiter, we had to count our blessings, 
count our shortcomings too, and be firmer and more demanding and determined with ourselves to live up to the spirit and the words of our great Constitution, like it or not at that moment particularly. And I want you, I want you to, although I, I'm uh, very appreciative of every word you said about me, but those, those good things, let's uh, emphasize that as to our form of government and what my friends and I are going to do to see that it does meet these graver problems that we are confronted with. And I use that time that's already been brought out of how long I've been there, 40 odd years, I've used some of that time to try to comprehend in more depth and in a better way, so far as I was concerned, the unmistakable duties of anyone holding an office of trust to make it work or change it around to better meet the occasion and let that be the object of both our affection and our appreciation. Uh, it's a mighty good tonic to the person that receives your cheers and ovations and that's, I um, don't want you to discount it, but I, let's, let's go back and repeatedly emphasize over and over in the large and small things and let that, that, that are needed to make our system work and then do our share the very best we can in bringing about results that we believe in, that we think are, are necessary, and that we believe we can live by. That's, a, that's not an uncertain feeling with me. I have assurances of faith that we are going to meet that demand, and it is a demand on us. I, uh, I have, I'm, well, may I say that I'm not entitled to as much credit as my friends here have given me here tonight, even though I appreciate it deeply. I, uh, I was just trying to do what looked like to be the duty and keep it, kept it up the best I could. May I have an indulgent word here, just a minute, it's a little unusual. During uh, these testimonials here tonight, my thoughts went back to my mother and father. I was the youngest child. These have a general meeting. I wouldn't bring them up. And I think of my three sisters and my three brothers who all passed away. But they were here tonight in part. They were not saints. But some of those good things you said about me fit them better. And anyway, that's where I got my start. That's where I got my sense of direction. And I say that in an all in the same spirit of love, and all in the same spirit of being thankful and trying to point out, point out, as a man and a woman does to his own children, those paths that we think should be cultivated. Now let me, let me thank you again for every word that's been said. Let me share with you something here that I have now that things like this are an encouragement to me. And they're part of our personnel, part of our life. I have four typewritten pages here. 
more on a hope with a little prayer for light and guidance. Virtually no money, virtually no money, didn't require it in those days. <laughs> and my, my wife, I want to mention her especially too, getting down to the work part, the planning part, the encouraging part, day by day. She was not only an inspiration, encouragement for me, she was did good for all. And I pay tribute to her tonight in a semi-political meeting for having done her part, she always did. But back to the point here. This friend that I'm going to quote to you now is an old timer. He's a constable, it was, in one of our counties where I was circuit judge. And I kept order and quiet in court and took police in door by door sometimes. So I had him in charge of the main courtroom door. Assigned him his duties and gave him an out, gave notice on the walls and said it when court would open. So two days or three after that election in 47, I got a card from him, a postal card. I think it just cost one penny then to send them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we, we've had a serious time here and a good time tonight. And this is my small contribution to the, the good time. <laughs> he says, Dear Judge Stennis, you didn't believe in switching over overnight, you know, call it some other <laughs> office. <laughs> he said, I am very sorry that you did not receive all of the votes which were cast in my home box. Now that's very carefully worded. <laughs> In fact, though, Judge, you did get them all except a few nutty ones. <laughs> now, some of your writers try to improve on that as being expressive. <laughs> And also, you lost some of the old soreheads. <laughs> now that's good English too. We are happy that you were elected, elected. Now, we want you to try for Mr. Truman's place. <laughs> Says you can win it. You just round up the votes in the rest of the country, and me and L.M. Pritchard will round them up in Octavio County. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't hold any more court there, but as long as he lived, I would drive by the courthouse when I went through Starkville and get someone to go in and see if my old friend was there. And if so, I'd get him to come out or I'd go in to see him. Let me close with the thought of all of our duties and privileges that relate to our constitutional form of government, amend it if you want to, in part, but the principle is what we want. And that we have an obligation there, and it yearns for it. If it doesn't get it, it seeks a substitute, and there's where the trouble is. 
Whatever, whatever I've been able to do in the Senate is due, due largely to three things. One is the help and assistance of a fine group of of staff, a splendid group. I think anyone to be to go over the road be an effective senator these days with that volume of complicated matters. They must have that staff, and I pay a special tribute to them. I want to mention, too, the eternal principles of our obligation to try to make it stand up and go through whatever comes in our form of government. I've made a study, a study not a reading a book, but made a study of the way the pioneers met their almost unconquerable agencies lined up against them back when they laid the foundation for our great system. And we uh, must train ourselves to set aside some of our energy, knowledge, and know-how, and keep on making our system work. And may God help us as we go. Thank you again. Very, very much. That was perfect. Absolutely perfect. That was great. That was great. That was great. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join the United States Marine Band now as we sing God Bless America. From above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America, my home sweet home. Thank <laughs> you. 